Greetings and welcome to another video. It's Tuesday, the 25th of June 2019. And I want to begin with a brief apology because this video is a remake of a video that I posted on YouTube yesterday. But after I posted that video, I looked back on it and found that there's a few things I really didn't like about the video. And in the end, I felt the best thing to do was to delete that video and remake it as this video you're watching now. So I want to apologise to everyone who watched a video that ended up getting deleted and I want to apologise to anyone who missed out on that video. Uh, but like I say, I was just deeply unhappy with how that video turned out. So I thought the best thing to do was to remake it as this video now. So yes, uh, let's get on, and hopefully this one will be much better in general. In general. So yes, um, the story we're talking about today, I first heard about in July 2009 from a magazine that I really like to purchase, um, which you can buy from most news agents here in the UK. And... Uh, the magazine is 14 times. If you're interested in stuff like the paranormal, like ghosts or UFOs or mysterious creatures, uh, or if you're interested in stuff like history and folklore and archaeology and stuff like that, then this is a fantastic magazine to pick up. It's uh, really interesting. And it does come out with fantastic gems like what we're talking about today, which is based here in Shropshire. It's not a story about Telford, because at the time of this story, Telford did not yet exist. Uh, but instead, it's based at the Shropshire Union Canal, which has a big connection to in history with the area of Shropshire, which would later become known as Telford. And what are we talking about today? We're talking about the man monkey of the Shropshire Union Canal. So, let's crack on the article, have a look at what we're talking about today. I'm just going to read the first couple of paragraphs or so of the, of the uh, article and then we'll just try and crack on from there as best we can. Right. Constructed in the early 19th century, England's Shropshire Union Canal is 67 miles long and extends from Ellesmere Port near Liverpool to Otherley Junction in Wolverhampton. The southern end of the canal, originally known as the Birmingham and Liverpool Junction Canal, was the last of the great narrow boat canals to be built and is testament to the masterful engineering of Thomas Telford. Its deep cuttings and massive embankments uh, can't fail to impress, but they create a picture that can be as eerie as it is picturesque. The Shropshire Union Canal is quite possibly Britain's most haunted waterway. Countless tales of encounters with spectral Roman soldiers, wailing banshees and ghostly World War II pilots are among those, circulate among those who know the history and lore of the canal. But the most famous, or infamous, a uh, ghostly resident of the canal is a diabolical entity known as the Man Monkey. Now, in the year 1883, there was a book published called Shropshire Folklore, and that book was published by Charlotte Sophia Byrne. And the story about this Man Monkey was, I think, according to this, uh, 
one of the first was one of the first stories to be related to the wider public about what is considered to be Britain's version of Bigfoot. Now, according to uh, Sophia Byrne, Charlotte Sophia Byrne, I meant to say, according to her, uh, this story uh, begins on the 21st of January 1879, when a labouring man was employed to take a cart of luggage uh, from Lantern in Staffordshire to Woodcock beyond Newport in Shropshire for the ease of a party of visitors who were going from one house to another. He was late in coming back, his horse was tired and could only crawl along at a foot's pace. So that was it was Yeah, so it was about on this particular night, because of all the travelling and carting around this luggage, it was about 10pm at night when he arrived at the place where the high road crosses the Birmingham and Liverpool Canal. It was then that the man received what was undoubtedly the shock of his life. Just before he reached the canal bridge, a strange black creature with great white eyes sprang out of a plantation by the roadside and alighted on his horse's back. He tried to push it off with his whip, but to his horror, the whip went through the thing and he dropped it on the ground in fright. The poor, tired horse broke into a canter and rushed onwards at full speed with a ghost still clinging on its back. How the creature at length vanished, the man hardly knew. But of course, after all that, the tale was hardly over. The labouring man uh, told his tale in the village of Wood Seaves. Wood Seaves spelt W-O-O-D-S-E-A-V-E-S. And was a mile further on and was basically a mile further down the road from where this incident happened. And he was so effectively frightened that the hearers that, yeah, the story basically scared the people of Woodseed so much that one man actually stayed with friends there all night rather than cross the terrible bridge which lay between him and his home. The witness himself, by the time he reached Woodseaves, was in a state of excessive terror and retired to his bed for several days. As this was because he was frustrated by his fear and fright. Um, Byrne also recorded that on the following day, one unnamed person travelling back to the bridge and sure enough, uh, there was the man's whip still lying on the ground where it had fallen. Inevitably, dark tales of this incident started to be told all around the neighbourhood with different versions of what had happened and I imagine, as a result, eventually other stories came to light as well. But it seems that the local constabulary uh, were already familiar with the nature and exploits of the hairy demon and knew exactly what was afoot, something that Byrne carefully chronicled. Some days after this incident, on the 21st of January, so some days after that, the man's master, or employer, was surprised by a visit from a policeman who came to request him to give information of his having been stopped and robbed on the big bridge on the night of the 21st of January. The master, apparently much amused, explained to the policeman 
that this was untrue and that in reality it was his employee who had reported the strange encounter at the big bridge. And he told the uh, policeman what happened. Of which the policeman, uh, seemingly nonplussed, replied, and I quote, Oh, was that all, sir? Oh, I know what that was. That was the man monkey, sir, as does come again at that bridge ever since the man was drowned in the cut. End quote. Byrne also recorded that she had spoken to the man's employer herself, but did not elaborate on the nature of the conversation within the pages of Shropshire Folklore. Now this article uh, goes on to tell how the author of this article we're talking about right, right now uh, himself first heard stories about the man monkey uh, in a book called Alien Animals, published in the 1980s by Janet and Colin Board. And he goes on to quote more recent examples of encounters with the man monkey. Uh, one such example was from a woman called Florence Florrie Abbott, who grew up not far from Wood Seaves and at the age of 82 still remembered hearing tales of a man monkey as a child in the late 1920s. And there was another example of a more recent encounter in the, uh, by a man called Bob Carroll, who was a lorry driver uh, with a well-known paint production company in the 1960s and 70s. Now, according to Bob Carroll's account, uh, he claims to have briefly glimpsed a hairy man near Bridge 39 late at night in January or February of either 1972 or 1973 while he was driving towards nearby Newport. Interestingly, Carroll states that when he saw the creature, he got a funny feeling like it was evil or not right. Now, on that note, um, according to uh, the account that happened in 1879, in January, uh, it stated that it happened at the Big Bridge. And the location of the encounter that Charlotte Byrne described in 1883 in her book uh, of the Big Bridge must be the large and impressive Bridge 39 just outside the village of Wood Seas on the Shropshire Union Canal. And as stated a moment ago, that's where Bob Carroll had his encounter in the 1970s and that's also the area where Florence Abbott remembers hearing her sto stories about the man monkey from back in the 1920s. Another story from the 1980s is by a man called Simon Ashpole. He was a keen bird watcher and nature lover. Ashpole was strolling the canal approximately three quarters of a mile from Bridge 39 on a summer's day in 1982 when he heard a really loud noise which at first he thought was a screaming fox. Uh, and then he saw a bloody great thing, as he says, like a gorilla, stand up and take off. Now, there are a couple of other paragraphs that mention similar encounters to what I've just talked about. And furthermore, there's an article shared from a magazine uh, that was publi published in 8th December 1878 and was from a magazine called Sheldrick's Aldershot and Sandhurst Military Gazette. 
Now, this article speculates that the man monkey was a escaped gorilla which broke free from a travelling menagerie which was travelling from the district of Maidley Wood in Shropshire and heading toward... Where was it heading toward to? Heading toward to Bridge North, also in Shropshire. So yes, um, on one hand, there we are. One possible idea of what this apparition, this strange beast with white eyes was, could have been an escaped gorilla, or it could have been, I don't know what else to be honest with you. But there are other stories, other tales of this man monkey haunting and stalking the Shropshire Union Canal. And I'm curious, dear viewer, have you ever heard about this creature, this apparition before? Did anyone you know, friend or family themselves, have stories about walking along the Union Canal and seeing such a thing? Be interesting to hear and know what you think. And in the comments below this video, by all means, share your stories. I would like to hear more about the Man Monkey of Shropshire. I look forward to hearing your stories. Or maybe you've got other stories to share about Shropshire's folklore. In which case, by all means, share them as well. It'll be good to hear such things. And of course, maybe in a future video, I would like to talk more about Shropshire's folklore as it's a very interesting subject worth talking about and worth sharing. But on that note, that concludes this video about today's folklore story. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. If so, please tell me what you think in the comments below. And yes, on that note, I'll end this video here. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate everyone who's watched this video. And I look forward to seeing you next time in the next video. Take care and goodbye.